Okay. I fixed it for a second. It just had an error. I just had to like restart. Sometimes there is errors depending on the version you have. I have some errors on 19, but on my laptop I have no errors, which is on F20. So it will take you to the same timeline with the same clip, except if you click down here, you can click to go back to parent timeline, which is the original one. Obviously you see no difference, but let's say if I flow frame this, so just m remove every moving frame, I mean dead frame. The quickest way to do this is click on this icon down here and then press S to cut to each frame that's moving. But then you can see this one isn't moving, so I'm going to go forward till the frame is moving. Click this icon here to delete everything before my cursor, then it automatically brings it here. So like this, bring it down here. So it's always moving. Um, there's even you can even stretch the clip out even more, so you're not really limited. Okay, that's it. So it's all moving. You can see. Now, if I go back to the parent timeline, it's going to ask if I want to save what I've just done. Um, I would actually keep this off because just in case you make a mistake. So, could do this. And you can see now it kind of automatically uh, loops because um, the flow frames is shorter than the amount of length I actually want the clip to be. So now I'm just going to twixter it. And then, you know, it's a very kind of useful thing to do. You could also automatically get flow frames from my Discord, then use the pre-comping kind of nested timeline to twixter it yourself but if you like haven't done that and you wanted to flow frame it yourself this is the way i'm doing it right now so two three four five six four so ten eleven okay gonna twixter it see how that turns out and now you can see that it's actually pretty smooth with the flow frames that have been done as well as um, well, the moving characters and stuff there's not as much warp Okay, now I'm just going to render this. The annoying thing is that we can't actually pre-comp it. That's the only issue. Um, but, you know, the nested timeline is going to save you a lot of time. And just really a lot of uh, less mess. So I'm just going to quickly render this and I'm going to show you what you can do with a normal clip that's been twixted inside of the timeline. So just wait for this to be done. Shouldn't take long. There we go. Drag this clip to the timeline. So this is the rendered one. Okay, now again, if you have a different clip, you can actually select multiple clips like this. Um, wait, I'm gonna add a second clip. So let's say if I have the same two clips, pretend this one's different, right? You can select multiple clips like this with control or shift and you can open a nested timeline with more than one clip. However, sometimes that can lag and cause it to crash. So I'm just going to do a singular clip, but you can do more than one. So please remember that. So again, I have to resave this little uh, project. It doesn't take up that much space. Take it to the folder I was going to save it in. Just put, call it precomp two, clip one or something, you know? And now we're back on the pre-comp, so that we're back on this clip's pre-comp. So let's say if I wanted to add some effects like edge detect. So we'll do that. Okay. 
Alright, oh, that's kind of bad edge detect, but. Uh, ignite. Oh, I'll add something else actually. Motion detect. That one just looks better. Add this. Saturation down. Up the brightness, then go to ignite super glow. Add this on top. This is a very good glow, by the way. So if you wanna if you want you can see the glow is not affecting the outer bits, I can just lower the threshold. And it's going to do that, and now lower the power of the radius, maybe. And then if I want to change the colour, I personally like going to BCC Tritone, like this. Um, You can do many colours, really. Let's go back to the blue. I liked how the blue looked. I think the glow's a bit much. There we go. You know, just, f just fade it out. Now, now that I've added that, we'll go back to our normal um, parent timeline. Save what I've just done. Now if we look, it's now on this clip and you can move and do whatever you want with it and add transitions with either blur mode curves on the clip or using an adjustment event on SVP21. So I personally really like this feature, you don't have to, um, and I hope you enjoy it. What I might do actually is just show what it's like with two clips. Uh, go from my edit here, there we go, just one, two, last thing I'm going to show, so I'm going to select both clips. And then open the nested timeline, save it in that folder. I'm not going to bother renaming it. And there we go, it brings the two clips into this one. So you could do a time slice transition if you wanted to. So yeah, um, I hope this is a helpful tutorial and maybe you'll use this in the future. See ya.